If you have your Bible, open to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles. And go to chapter 20. Continuing with the series, Out of the Box. Get out of that box. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. If you don't have it, they'll have it on the screen here behind me. Starting with verse 1. I'm going to skip some verses, but this whole chapter is just so powerful. It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat saying, a great multitude is coming against you. Let's go down to verse 5. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not the God in heaven? And do you not rule over all kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? And they dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, If disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence, for your name is in this temple. And we will cry out to you in, in, somebody say in, in our affliction, and you will hear and safe and now here are the people of Ammon Moab and Mount Seir whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt but they turned from the land and did not destroy them here they are rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession which you gave us to inherit our God will you not judge them for we have no power that's important right there for we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us nor do we know what to do but our eyes are upon you now all Judah with their little ones their wives and their children stood before the Lord and the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel In verse 15, he says, Listen, all of Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, Do not be afraid, nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go down against them, and they will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, And you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves. Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear. Do not be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them for the Lord is with you. Just touch somebody and say, the Lord is with you. Verse 18. Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground and all of Judah and the inhabitants inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord worshiping the Lord then the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high I like quiet worship sometimes but it makes me nervous 
I like loud praise. So they rose early in the morning and they went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, Jehoshaphat appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and they were saying, Praise the Lord for His mercy endures forever. Now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir who had come against Judah and they were defeated. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. So when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, they looked towards the multitude, and there were their dead bodies fallen on the earth. No one had escaped. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies, precious jewelry, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. Out of the box. Out of the box. If I had a long working title, my long title of this message would be when you praise in the box, it gets out of the box to bring God in the box to get you out of the box. But what we'll just do it for short today, we'll just call it praise outside the box. Praise outside the box. Will you join hands with the person next to you? Heavenly Father God, I am so thankful for your spirit that is in this house. I believe you're going to do something amazing in this place today. Thank you that we're not only going to witness it, but we're going to be participants in it. That through your people's praise this morning, walls are going to be torn down and enemies are going to be defeated and blessings are going to be released. We're thankful today and we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen. In the scripture, Jehoshaphat references Abraham. And he says, Abraham is your friend. Now I'm reminded of a time when God made a promise to Abraham. And when Jesus, it's called a Christophany, it's, it's when Jesus appeared before we read about him in the New Testament. And when Jesus appeared to Abraham, he said, Abraham, your wife is going to bear a child. You're going to have a son. When Sarah heard this, she laughed. And Jesus spoke to Sarah. And he said, is anything too hard for the Lord? Now when I read that scripture, is anything too hard for the Lord? I realize that this scripture exists to remind us that there are going to be times when it feels like this problem is too hard. That this struggle is too much to survive. You don't have a scripture of anything is, too, is anything too hard for the Lord unless you're going to go through things that make you question, can God bring me out of this? But faith rises up in you and faith reminds you that nothing is impossible for God. Here is the people of Judah. Now at this time, Israel, as we know it, is split into two kingdoms. There is a northern kingdom that is called Israel, and there is a southern kingdom that is called Judah. Now the northern kingdom, Israel, is always going to be ruled over by evil men. And just prior to chapter 20 in verse 19 and 18, we're reading about a king by the name of Ahab. You know Ahab because he was married to the woman who wore too much makeup, Jezebel. And, and Ahab was extremely, 
At least that's what I remember was preached. That's what she did wrong. She wore too much, too much makeup. And she killed people too, but that wasn't the worst sin. She wore too much makeup. So Ahab is an evil king. He's an evil man. He's controlled by an evil woman. Well, Jezebel dies, but Ahab is still the king. And in, in chapter 18 and 19, we're reading about the end of Ahab's life. He is killed in battle. So now Israel, the northern kingdom, is without a ruler. Judah is being ruled over by a righteous man by the name of Jehoshaphat, which that is a cool name because when you have fat, and not like, you know, the overweight fat, but the cool fat, the pH fat in your name. You're a bad dude. So Jehoshaphat is ruling over Judah, the southern kingdom. Now these three armies get together and they decide we are going to attack Judah and we are going to attack Jehoshaphat. Now why wouldn't they go after Israel who is without a king? Why are you going to go after Judah? who has a righteous king because the devil doesn't mess with people who are on his team. And when he decides, when these three armies come together, they say, come on, we're going after Judah. Understand, the first place the enemy is going to attack you is in your praise because he knows that your praise is powerful. And if he can get your praise, he's got your weapon that you can use to defeat him. So he sets his sights to attack praise, to attack righteousness, to attack the people that are doing what God wants him to do. He goes after Jehoshaphat. Three armies are coming in. Some now on one side of Judah, we have Philista, where the Philistine army lives. We know they can't run to Philista. And then we have the Mediterranean Sea, so they can't run into the sea. We know they're not going to go up to Israel. So they are trapped. Three armies coming against them. They are trapped. It is a terrible thing to be trapped. Trapped. There is a condition called claustrophobia. And it is the fear of being trapped. Nothing's wrong with you. But when the door shut, it feels like the air begins to get pulled out of that little room that you're in and you feel the walls begin to close in around you and, and you begin to sweat and, and you begin to get nervous. You feel like you're going to pass out. Why? Because you are terrified of being trapped. There doesn't even have to be a problem for you to feel trapped. If somebody came in here today and locked all the doors to this room, some of you would go into a panic. Even if nothing was wrong, just the idea that you can't leave. God bless all the people who sit in the middle of the rows because I know you feel trapped. <laughs> the feeling of not being able to get out. Being trapped is torture. Being trapped simply means that your options are limited if you have any options at all. Trapped. There are some of you that you feel trapped in a marriage. Now, this wasn't the marriage you chose. This wasn't the marriage you was, you, you was getting into because, you know, the, the person you dated is not the person that you married. You know, you feel like, hey, what, what's up with this? Bait and switch. I, I dated this one guy, but then this other guy showed up at the wedding. And once I said, I do. And now I feel trapped. I feel trapped in a marriage that I, I didn't want. I feel trapped in a marriage that I didn't ask for. Some of you feel trapped. Single mothers, I can't imagine what a single mother goes through in her mind, how a single mother must feel trapped. Abused. Broken. Cheated on. Left to raise a child or children on your own. But now you don't have the education to get a job, anything above minimum wage. So you've got to figure out a way to get these kids back and forth to school and keep them involved so they can be like all the other kids at school. But you've got to go to school yourself and work a job. And I feel trapped. I love my children, but I feel trapped. 
You don't even have to have a problem to be trapped. Do you know some of the most trapped people in the world today are successful people? Why do you think these people who have millions and millions of dollars are dying of drug overdoses? Because they're trapped. They're not trapped because they're financially in trouble. They're not trapped because they don't have fame. They're not trapped because they're not popular. They are trapped because their success has put them in a box that now they can't get out of. It is a torturous thing to be trapped. Jehoshaphat, the people of Israel, of Judah, are trapped, boxed in, with no way out. But in verse 5, the Bible said that here is Jehoshaphat. Now, Jehoshaphat, he could have disguised himself, called up, you know, some of his friends and said, come on, let's get out of here. We'll let everybody else fend for themselves, but, but let's get out of here. At least we'll save our own lives. But Jehoshaphat didn't do that. Jehoshaphat ran to the house of God. And when he got to the house of God, he bowed himself down and began to worship in the house of God. And didn't start off by talking about his enemies, but started off talking about God. Are you not God? that is in heaven and do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the earth and did you not give us this land as an inheritance and now this enemy is coming to take what you gave to us thank God for the people who when they get trapped don't run from the house but they run to the house I feel an anointing in this room today. I'm just going to tell you right now. Thank God for the people like David who say, you know what? I've not been able to get to the temple. I've not been able to get to the house of worship. I've been running from Saul. He's been trying to take my life. And that's why he wrote, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There is something about church that's more than just checking off a box on your list and doing what is your routine to do. There is still hope in the house of the Lord. There is still healing in the house of the Lord. You can still find refuge and rest in the house of the Lord. And he ran to the house. What is it going to benefit you to run away from the house when you get into trouble? When I get in trouble, take me to the house. You know, you, 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 take, you take, take them to the house. You take it to the house. You take it to the house. That means you schooled your opponent. You take it to the house. Take it to the house. Take it home. Take it home, brother. Come on. Take. See, that's what you got to do with the devil sometimes. When, when he starts fighting you, you say, you better watch out because I'm going to take you home. I'm going to take you to the house. And when I take you to the house, I'm going to school you, and you're going to get out of my life. There is help and healing and hope in the house of the Lord. Tell somebody, I was glad when they said unto me. Boy, that really turns modern church on its head, doesn't it? You mean we got to go to church today? You mean we got to wake up early and go to church today? I mean, it's Sunday. Can't we have our Sundays? No, God bless you and your cute little pacified life. But I, I, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. This is more than a routine to me. This is life. And they began to worship. They worship. What separates the real praiser from an acting praiser is the presence of a problem. Let me say that again. The thing that separates real praisers from acting praisers is the presence of a problem. In other words, real problems reveal real praisers. Jesus! 
When I, when I, was, a, when I was a kid, we looked forward to Sunday night services. We had some doozies on Sunday night. Peggy, you was there. You know what I'm talking about. And, and dad would preach, and, and then everybody would gather around the altar, and they, everybody had a unique shout. And by shout, that, that's the way we knew dance, you know. We were a predominantly white church, so nobody in the church could dance, so we called it shouting. <laughs> about the best you could do is if the Holy Ghost really moved, somebody did the running man. I mean, that's about, you know, that's about the best you got. So we would watch as kids because everybody had a unique shout. And I can remember as a kid because, you know, my dad would preach for an hour. And I'd think, man, that's so long. And so when the choir would hit that second song and they'd start singing something like, God rides on the waters, he rides on the floods. And somebody would take off walking and you're like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Because if two more people walk, dad ain't preaching tonight. You know what I mean? You remember? If two more people walk and you'd start rooting for people. Go on, go on, walk, walk, go, go. Somebody else walks. You're like, we got one more to go. Come on, somebody. And then you'd look over and somebody'd be feeling it. And they'd be, you're like, come on, just stand up. Go, go. And when they'd stand up, you'd like high five and everybody don't preach in the night. We're going to Frisch's because we're getting out early. It's the truth. Well, as kids, we were so fascinated by the way people shouted that we started mimicking them and having our own church. So they actually went downstairs in one of the classrooms and they built us a little platform with a little podium. And, and somebody would sing and I would preach and then we would all mimic the shouting that we saw our parents or our, our, our parents' friends or all the adults doing upstairs in big church. And they would mimic. And you know, we, we would just do what we saw. But we were doing it because it was fun. It was a fun thing to do. It was easy to get down there and mimic what somebody else did. But then I grew up. And when the doctor said, you've got an artery that is blocked in your brain by 70%, I realized it was a little bit harder to dance now than it was to dance when I had no problems. And when he said, your, your little girl's your little girl's brain is filled with cysts and we need to talk about aborting the pregnancy, it was a little harder to dance then, to shout then, to praise then, than it was when I was a kid and I had no problems. Now, thank God I was still able to shout and to dance and to praise because I learned that real problems produce real praisers. And there are some of you in this room, the reason your praise has no power is because you've only mimicked what you've seen everybody else do. But when you get into the middle of a problem and you come into the house and you're still able to praise the Lord, there's a power that is only revealed with the presence of a problem. Do I have any real praisers in the room? You show me someone, Peggy, you show me someone with a powerful praise and I'll show you somebody with a painful past. Because there are some songs that can't be written on the mountain. There are some songs that you can only write when you get into the valley with the giant. And when you get into a valley, you'll write things like, I lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. So if you are sitting next to somebody in church and they always seem to be loud and obnoxious and they're always bumping into you, before you criticize the way they praise, why don't you find out the story behind Hallelujah! 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't you dare talk about my praise because you weren't there when he brought me out and you weren't there when he healed my body and you weren't there when he delivered me and you weren't there when he blessed me and you weren't there when he made a way when there was no way. And when you're a real praiser who's been through some real problems, you can't hold it back. Somebody take a 30 second praise break in this house. Hallelujah. Give me some real praisers in the room. Real praisers, stand up. Do I have any real praisers? People that's facing some real problems. some people who have been through some real problems who need this moment right now. You need to get this next phrase out. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Touch somebody say, you ain't never been through nothing. Get out of my way. Because he done brought me through too much for me to stand here and hold my peace. He ain't never done me nothing, done me nothing but good. Hallelujah. 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 Look at them from the front to the back. Real praisers. Real praisers. Real praisers. You might have a cute song from the daytime. But let me tell you about the time he gave me a song in the midnight. Let me tell you about the time I was surrounded and he made a way where there was no way. That's where this praise is coming from. I didn't copy this from my grandma or my daddy or my, I had to go to hell and back to get this praise for myself. Praise. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just tell somebody I got to praise and I got to get it out. I can't hold this back. He's been too good to me. He's, he's done too much for me. He's brought me through too much. I should have lost my mind. I should have lost everything that I had, but God moved when nobody else could move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, if this is all we do today,
Hallelujah! Hallelujah! God's revealing some real praisers in the room. People going through some real problems, but God's revealing some real praisers. People that are saying, devil, I don't care if you got me backed up. I don't care if you got me boxed in. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And at midnight. Paul and Silas begin to pray and sing praises to God. And the Lord sent an earthquake and opened all the doors of the prison and all the chains were loose. Stop waiting for God to do it before you praise Him. Praise Him and God will do it. And I 
want this place to explode. One, two, three, shout! Yeah! Give me the kick drum. One, two, three, say. I gotta praise. I gotta praise and I gotta let it out. I gotta praise. Do you? Do you? Does anybody gotta praise? One more time, say. I'm gonna count to three, and you better give your praise. One, two. One, two, three, shout! Oh, we got to praise! Everybody say, I gotta praise! Say, I gotta praise! You got to praise! I gotta praise! I gotta praise! somebody next to you hey you got any real problems and then ask them are you a real praiser then will you help me for a moment will you magnify the Lord with me will you help me exalt his name together because if we get a moving in this house he's gonna start moving in the houses out there and in the cities out there when God starts moving in here, next he starts moving out there. Oh. Strongholds break the chain. Find the devil in Jesus' name. It's all right, it's all right. We got a right to shake the foundations with praise. Say glory, glory, hallelujah. This is what this is what we've come to do. We're gonna tear down strongholds, break the chain. Find the devil, the devil in Jesus' name. It's all right, it's all right. We got a right to shake the foundations. I gotta praise, hey. I, I gotta praise, I gotta praise, and I gotta get it out. I gotta praise, I gotta praise, I gotta praise, I gotta praise, and I gotta get it out. I gotta praise, I gotta praise, I gotta praise. Something happens. There's something that happens when the praise starts rolling in here. It just follows you home. It follows you to your job. It follows. Something's moving in here. And I believe something's changing out there. Something's moving in here. And I believe something's changing out there. It's all right, it's all right. We got a right to shake. Say glory, glory, hallelujah. 
This is what this is what we come to do. Tear down strongholds, break the chain. Find the devil in Jesus' name. It's all right, all right. We got a right to come on, sing it again. Say glory, glory, glory. 